If you enjoy this program, please like and subscribe. And the Jews are taunted in books like John where they're told in John 5.46, if you would have believed in Moses, you would have believed in me because he wrote about me. No, if you would have believed in Moses, you would definitely not believe in me. And the only people who believe in Jesus are those who are just completely unfamiliar with the writings of Moses. Uh, my name is Gilbert Casas, and I'm calling from Corpus Christi, Texas. And the question I have is, is there any scripture in the Torah or the Tanakh that Hashem himself said, I am coming in the flesh to be the son of Hashem to die on the cross? If you can give me a scripture, thank you very much. God bless. If, if I can give you a scripture like that in Tanakh, I wouldn't be on air right now doing the show. I'd be in church right now. If there was anywhere in the Hebrew Bible that said that the Messiah is going to die and rise on the third day, and if you believe in him, you're saved, and if you don't, you're damned, and he would spend three days in the tomb, We'd all be in church right now. And this is precisely the reason why Christians are so infuriated with me. And this is precisely the reason why um, the church had to portray the Jews as demons or um, Satan or blinded or there are scales over our eyes or why? Because the Christian Bible it says that these passages actually exist, and they don't. It's not that they don't exist verbatim. They don't exist in any form. And the Christian Bible insists that it does say that. And I've come to the conclusion, therefore, that Christians just don't read the Hebrew Bible. Aside from three select chapters in the book of Isaiah, Isaiah 7, 9, and 53, and a couple of chapters in Jeremiah, they're not reading the Hebrew Bible. And as a result, whoever wrote the third gospel can get away with the claim in Luke 24, verse 44 through 46. So that's the very end of the book of Luke that Jesus' death and resurrection on the third day was foretold in the Torah, the prophets, and the Psalms. How did he get away with that? How did that get published? How did that get past the proofreaders? The answer is that Christians were just not armed to assess the veracity of that outrageous claim. Paul, earlier, the letter 1 Corinthians was written let's say about 35 years before Luke. He makes the exact same claim in the first four passages, that Jesus' death and resurrection on the third day is a fulfillment of Scripture, and that's how verse 3 and 4 of chapter 15 ends. And those of you who are watching me who are Christians know that 1 Corinthians 15 is the most famous chapter in all of Paul's letters, right? Now, how, how does the church deal with that? How do they address that? And why don't the Jews believe this if it's in our Hebrew Bible? So they could say, well, the truth is, it doesn't really say that anywhere. But the, the, church, the churches would just empty out. He would just run, run out of the churches. I mean, it would just... The churches would just bolt. Every exit door would just fly open, and parishioners would be gone in a second. If, so they can't be told this. So rather what they're told is that the Jewish people are blind. That's why they don't believe in Jesus. There's a 
a blindness to spark jealousy among the Jews because this is a period assigned for the for those who are grafted in. Paul makes that case in in Romans. Why? Why say stuff like that? It's completely convoluted. It's not just it isn't correct or isn't accurate. It gets worse. See, in the Messianic age, the non-Jews will come to the Jews, and they're going to confess the following. Jeremiah 16, 19. The Gentiles will come to you and say, surely we, the Gentiles, have inherited lies and vanity where there's no truth. After all, how can a man make unto himself gods when they're not? Well, why in the Hebrew Bible that you Christians believe in does it repeatedly declare that at the end of days, the Gentiles will say to the Jews we were wrong? I mean, if for a moment, if the church is correct, then at the end of days, the prophecy should state that the Jews would come to the Gentiles and say, you know what, we really, we blew that whole thing on the doctrine of the Trinity. Tell us about the hypostatic union. We realize now that God is with the church, and they always had it. Please explain to us more about the doctrine of incarnation. But no, it is, there's nothing like that. At the end of days, Bible that you Christians believe in says that 10 Gentiles of different languages will grab the hem, the shirt of a Jew. So they're not going to just go over to a Jew, but they're not going to let go. That's why they're grabbing the shirt. They're saying, Nel cho'imochem. Let us go with you. Those of you who understand Hebrew, then you're not a Christian, will know that imachem means let us go with you, and that's a plural pronoun. Okay, The English language doesn't have a pronoun like that, except if you're south of the, of the, the Mason-Dixon, so then it'll be let us go with you all. Because <laughs> we have heard that God is with you all. So... That's exactly why the church portrays the Jews, portrays me as some evil rabbi who just trolls Christians. Why? Because they can't just say that the Jews look at the, the Bible and draw a completely different conclusion. Well, why do they draw that different conclusion? Well, the reason is, is that the fantastic claims made in the Christian Bible— require fantastic evidence, and the evidence that's offered up by Christendom is not just, it not only doesn't meet the standard of fantastic or ordinary, it's torturous. It's completely convoluted. There's, there's no, no passage like the Messiah, like God's Son is going to come down in the form of a human being. In fact, we are told the contrary, that God is, is not a man. And he doesn't lie or change his mind. So the Hebrew Bible is that. It's not the Old Testament conveying that it's somehow it is decaying in its spiritual value, uh, and it doesn't uh, will not vanish away. And in fact, the Torah assures us that the Torah will never vanish away, and it is forever and ever. And the longest chapter, the largest chapter in all of the Hebrew Bible, is a chapter wholly devoted to conveying that the Torah is beautiful and it's forever. And in fact, salvation is far from the wicked because they know not my Torah. Psalm 119, verse 155. So this is a very big problem for the church because the church is conveying that Jesus is the fulfillment, the culmination of Tanakh. And the Jews are taunted in books like John where they're told in John 5, 46, if you would have believed in Moses, you would have believed in me because he wrote about me. No. If you would have believed in Moses, you would definitely not believe in me. And the only people who believe in Jesus are those who are just completely unfamiliar with the writings of Moses. 
that's the real truth. No, no, there's nothing remotely resembling that, quite the contrary. The notion that human sacrifice could atone for the sins of the wicked is opposed by the Hebrew Bible. So this is not just something benign like, am I allowed to travel to Arkansas? No, this is absolutely forbidden. It's haram. It's absolutely illicit. And that's why the Jewish people don't believe, because there's nothing, not only is there no verse resembling what you just suggested, for themselves, son of God is supposed to die and somehow resurrect. There's nothing like that in the Hebrew Bible. If there were, we'd, we'd all be in church right now. And this is something that the church has had to deal with for a long time. But there are days coming when all the nations will speak in a pure speech, Zephaniah 3, verse 9, and the knowledge of God will cover the world as the water covers the sea, Isaiah chapter 11, verse 9. Those passages really do exist. They're not phantom verses. Thank you for your question. If you enjoy this program, please like and subscribe. Adon אזי מלך, אזי מלך, שמו נקרא, ואחרי כפלות הכל לבדו, ימלוך נורא, והוא היה.